What's up guys, in this video I want to briefly talk about mid-poly and uh, low-poly bevels. Well, there, there's a significant difference, I'll show you what I mean. So uh, this is going to be focused on the game asset workflow. So I briefly touched on this in one of my other videos, but I want to make this the main focus. So, obviously when we run bevels, the whole reason we run a bevel is to get this nice little effect on the edges to kind of reflect the light and make it pop a bit more because everything in real life has some sort of bevel. Even if it's really small like a knife blade, it still has a bevel on it. So uh, when we do game assets, we tend to want to do it one of two ways. We either want to use one segment or we want to use no bevel at all. Reason being is because three segment bevels are going to often yield way more geometry than we need for a low poly game asset. Now this is a very basic example, but you know, extend this to a, uh, a greater example and the same fundamentals will apply. So right now we have a three segment bevel on a cube. You can't see it right now because my banner is blocking it, but right now we have 188 tries. So this is just for a cube. Three segment bevel, 188 tries. If we go down to one, we go down to 44. If we go down to no bevel at all, we have 12 tries. Right, uh, we can't see the tries now, but um, back end Blender, everything is triangulated, so uh, it's basically doing this in, in back end. So one, two, you know, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve triangles, right? Makes sense. Okay. So assuming this was a more complex object, um, the reason we want to use one segment bevels in game assets is, uh, is simply because the difference is so minimal and you're going to save a lot of poly count for more complex objects. So for example, right now we have three segments and then if we go down to one, the difference is really subtle. Unless you zoom in really close, you can't really see much of a difference. So if we zoom out, you can't see a difference at all. So um, that's the whole idea behind using a one segment bevel and we call this a mid poly, uh, a mid poly bevel. So you have mid poly bevels, which mean a bevel with one segment, and you have no bevels at all, which we just refer to as a hard edge. So in game assets, we have two options. We can either use a one segment bevel or we can bake our bevel onto a hard edge. And I'm gonna show you why the hard edge strategy is not very, um, not a very good idea. It doesn't look as good. As a matter of fact, I think I should probably just do it now. So what I'm gonna do is duplicate this and on the duplicate I'm just going to remove the bevel completely. We'll call this one cube underscore low and for this one we'll call this cube underscore high and on the cube underscore high I'm going to use like three segments because anywhere above three you can't see much of a difference. It's not like significant at all so uh, right around there and maybe we'll do 0 .08, 0 .008 so it's a bit smaller. Okay, so let me quickly export this cube underscore low and then the cube underscore high so that way we can uh, just demonstrate the bake inside of substance because I am not a fan of baking in Blender as much as I once was. So we'll do cube underscore low. We're going to turn on selected objects so that way it doesn't export everything. And then for the high poly one, oh by the way, almost forgot, make sure you unwrap it. Did I do it? I don't even remember. I'm losing it. Um, yeah, cube underscore low, cube underscore high, we're also going to export. And let's bring this guy into substance. So here's the cube in substance. Once again, this is just the default cube from Blender. No bevel, no nothing, just a hard edge. So if we try to bake a bevel onto the hard edge here, I'm gonna go to bake mesh maps and I'm just gonna bake normal only for demonstration. Um, we'll just do four times anti-aliasing. We're going to choose the high poly from this section right here and then we'll just do 4k because why not? It doesn't really matter here. Now when we click bake you're going to see it starts to bake on the bevel. So now we have a bevel and it looks good but the issue is when we actually get up close to it. So if we zoom in you're going to see we have a very very visible hard edge right here and that's because baking bevels on hard edges like this simply is not going to work. Normal maps work um, to bake detail, but they don't naturally maintain the curvature, right? The hard edge and the bevel simply have two completely different sets of curvature. The bevel has curvature, the hard edge does not. So um, it's going to be very limited in terms of the detail we can get on a baked bevel like this. So although the poly count is much lower than a one segment bevel, oftentimes the one segment bevel is a lot better choice 
because it just it, it matches the curvature close enough and we actually have a bevel there. So I'm going to go back in here real quick. Now if we add a new bevel and we'll set this one to one segment and we'll do 0 .008 on this one as well. See this? Although we're only set to one, the differences are quite minimal and up close you'll kind of see a difference but not much. So what we're going to do is bring this one into substance and bake it and see the differences. By the way, keep in note that I do have harder normals turned on to make sure the shading is clean for the bevel. So you can turn that on and what we're going to do is simply, we could re-unwrap it. I don't think it's going to do too much though and we're going to export it again. So here's the one segment bevel inside of Substance. It's, uh, it's very hard to even notice that this is a chamfer. So uh, it's going to actually look a lot better and you'll see why. So we're going to do the same exact thing. I didn't touch the high poly mesh. I'm going to go to normal and change up some of these parameters real quick. Select the high poly and we'll just change anti-aliasing because why not? And we'll click on bake. So you're going to notice this one is going to bake, but um, you're not going to see that hard edge because we don't have a hard edge. So if we zoom in, no matter how close we get, we have a really, really clean bevel right here. And it is noticeable that it's a chamfer, but we still get those nice reflections from the bake. It's very subtle. If I remove it, you can kind of see the differences, but it does look a bit better. Now there is one problem here I do want to point out. And um, I'll, I'll tell you a few solutions. One is to not bake in substance marmoset is probably going to give you the best result for something like this. And um, there's another thing I want to point out. Notice how when the normal map is disabled, it, um, it kind of softens this corner. If I turn down the brush size, this corner right here, you can see the hard edges around the triangle. And if we remove this, it's really hard to, well, you can still see it, but it's a bit softer. Another option is to um, turn your high poly mesh to a one segment bevel as well and you'll just use the high poly to bake out the high poly details, not the actual bevel. Because at the end of the day, you're not baking a high poly to a low poly for the bevel, you're baking a high poly to the low poly for all of the intricate details in there that we don't need to build into the low poly mesh. So we just wanna save poly count. And uh, yeah, the, the bevels don't make much of a difference here, but the low poly you always wanna keep at one segment. So. If you wanted to, you could make your high poly mesh one segment as well. The difference there is you're simply baking on the details from the high poly mesh, not the bevel. So it's kind of up to you. Um, just depends what you want. You could bake hard edges if you prefer that, or if you have a really, really tight budget, I would go with the hard edge route. But go into any game and you'll see if the object is not a single segment bevel, you're going to see a very visible edge. It's really hard to manage, especially with a hard edge like that. So hope the video helped, hope it gave you some insight. That is how you wanna run bevels for your games. And it's a, it's a pretty common solution in most games if you just observe the mesh. So hope the video helped and I'll see you in the next one.